Hello, Brother Munro here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And, uh, well, there's a lot of new stuff. Uh, new campaign, obviously. New update, 1.5. And a new version of the mod, 1.7, which is very exciting. Um, there have been a lot of... Well, actually, there, there have been a lot of... Uh, really cool things that the devs have put into 1.5. One of the, like, pretty much all great stuff, as far as I can tell. So there's a bunch of new hulls, particularly uh, light cruisers um, and heavy cruisers, late period, which is really good because there's a lot of seaminess in there, um, especially for some of the smaller nations like Spain, China and stuff. There's a few French ones, which is going to be important in a moment. Um, they've split, the, the, for me in particular, who loves playing as Britain, um, they've split the N3 and the G3 up. Um, so the G3, the N3 G3 has just been renamed <laughs> uh, as the N3. But um, the G3 is a brand new battlecruiser hull for the British, which is lovely. And, best of all for people like me, uh, who love building cruisers and things, and playing as Britain, we now have new Mark IV and Mark V gun models. Thank you. There's also a bunch of new um, uh, American guns, some more Austrian guns, and they've redone the Japanese and Italian guns as well. So, great. Um... However, there's some really cool stuff down here. Rebalanced accuracy. Um, this is so much better than I thought it was going to be. Um, when I first read it, I was like, wow, this is actually great. I'll, we'll get into some battles later and I'll talk about it then. The screen, there's a new button. This thing. Oh, so nice. And uh, just overall, really, really great. And um, the mod has been updated as well with some... Economy challenge, uh, economy challenge, economy changes. So I've done my best to tidy everything up uh, for 1.5. Uh, there's a few other things, uh, mostly focused on the economy, trying to rein in the excessive multi-trillion <laughs> dollar economies in the late game um, and to stop nations exploding and stuff like that. But let's get into it. What are we doing? Well, we're going to be doing... France, yes, it's time to uh, <laughs> break open the baguettes and uh, get ready to play France. I'm starting in 1890, yes, haven't done that for a while. Uh, we will be on normal difficulty <coughs> and uh, historical AI opponents. We will not be auto-generating a fleet, uh, but we will be using shared design selective at present, at the time of clicking the start campaign button, there are no um, <laughs> shared designs loaded because one of the patch notes 1.5 said uh, shared designs are a no-no, um, which means that I will have to recreate the ship pack for 1.5. Um, so keep an eye out because I might do some of that live um, so keep an eye out, make sure your notifications are on, you're subscribed, all that good stuff, uh, so that you um, can catch those as I sit and create ships for each nation. Anyway, I'm going to hit uh, start campaign, and uh, I'll see you on the map. All right, here we are, the mighty French Empire. Um, now, the French Navy... Uh, <laughs> Well, and this it has a bit of a spotted history, hasn't it? Um, up until this point, some highs and some definite lows. Uh, <laughs> our job is to, of course, make them the mighty force that they were always meant to be. So we're going to need uh, an overall strategy because we have, well, we have quite a lot of colonies. The Algerian and Tunisian part of the Empire, North Africa, that can be covered from our Mediterranean bases here. Toulon, I think, and, or is it Nice that's the biggest one? 
Uh, it's actually Marseille. It's neither of them. But Marseille, Toulon, and Nice, these are going to be our... So we're definitely going to need a Mediterranean fleet. We're going to need uh, <laughs> an Atlantic fleet based out of Brest. And we're going to need at least a little bit in the channel here at Le Havre, which is also going to be... Well, actually, probably maybe a third fleet here at Le Havre because uh, this is going to be the front line against any German problems. So this is going to be the main concentration of our force, but we have West Africa here. We have some Caribbean holdings. We have uh, Indochina, and we have a little bit here um, in Djibouti. Plus the odd, like, little Pacific thing here and there. I think this is like, yeah. Uh, so we are pretty spread out, but realistically, who are we most likely to be at war with? Germany and Austria. So we don't need to worry about Indochina too much at the moment. We don't need to worry about uh, Djibouti too much. These islands should be relatively safe, but we're going to have to have something in the West Indian Ocean or we'll lose transports. And we're definitely going to need stuff in West Africa and the Central Atlantic. So there's quite a lot to, to do in terms of design. Let us have a look at what we have access to. Because one of the nice things about being uh, French is that we have access to a lot of ships in <laughs> this early period. We have four battleships to choose from. They're all pretty similar in size. What is the maximum I can build at the moment? Yeah, so I can build a maxed out battleship one if I want. But we also have the various ironclads. Now, I am going to be playing this with a restriction because... That's always fun. Uh, and the restriction is, um, I don't know what to call it, but uh, it's not an artisan campaign like I did the last time I played France. Um, but we are going to have this concept that basically every ship we build, I can refit it as much as I like, but it has to be an active combatant. No mothballing, no selling, no... You know, I can move them around, things like that. Put them on defend, maybe, but all ships are quite likely to be an active member of the fleet for the entire campaign until they are sunk. Uh, so, I think probably in terms of... Actually, this has way lower resistance. 75. It is more stable and has better floatability, though. But I think the best mixture of stats might actually be this one. The Ironclad 2. Certainly as our, uh, as our starting battleship, that's Potentially an attractive option. How cheap is it? Oops, uh, 10,000 tons. So this is 12.2 million base. And this is 12.5, so this is slightly cheaper too. We're going to go with the Ironclad 2 as our start ship. We're going to go... Oh, there's something else I need to be doing. <laughs> Uh, obviously we're French. None of this inches rubbish. We're going to be playing in metric. Yes. Um, anyway. <laughs> so we could go for 10,900 tons. I think 10,000 tons might be a good compromise. Again, we, we need some numbers here. We don't, we're not going to have an infinite budget or anything. Um... 18 knots, if we can do it. And let's just go 
standard on everything for now. Okay, towers. Okay, there is a big jump in base accuracy going up to the front tower four. But I don't get too much going for the five. So the four, I think, is going to be a good option. And the secondary tower... Mm. Yeah, there is a jump going to the large... Let's go for the large one, not large two. And then let us grab some funnels. Go two to start with. I don't think I have any upgrades to anything. So we're going to need more funnels. Probably four. Yeah, 100% engine efficiency is actually really, really good to have. Um, I love the bow on this ship as well. <laughs> right, guns. Um, we have Mark 1 everything. I don't think there's any point going for the 305s because... Well, actually, they do have slightly better accuracy. What about rate of fire? Six nine five four four one three seven. I think possibly the two fifty four is our base. Um, might be a good starting point, and let's go for a. Uh, 260. Wow, okay. Uh, plus six. Can I just type it in? Yeah, okay, good. Um, a 260 millimeter, 30 caliber gun. It's not the most powerful thing in the world. But it'll do. Uh, most of the damage is probably going to be done by our secondaries and our torpedoes anyway. I would love a 155 millimeter secondaries. That would be awesome. Yeah, 155 millimeter, 34 fours because I, I can't increase the length at the moment casements we don't have access to torpedo launches yes please um can we fit like 80 millimeter guns on this yeah Yes, let's get some 80 millimeter, 30 caliber guns as well, just for a little bit of extra firepower. Hmm. Yeah, I'm liking these so far. Right, we can. Well, we're stuck on iron plate. Jesus. Um, standard ratio, base view, standard. I don't think I can upgrade much, if any, of this. No, nope, that's it. I'm slightly concerned that we are 3% overweight somehow, but I haven't done the armor yet. So, our quality here is an almighty 3%. Which, um doesn't inspire the most confident 
especially when even these guns are saying that we need 300 plus millimeters of armor. Um, let's go for the 300. Now, I think 120 will be enough to protect against secondary firepower. Deck wise, oh, it's really not very, very much at all. We could get away with a teeny tiny 10 millimeter deck plate. The tower, maybe 330. Uh, this again can be, yeah, two and a half millimeters, fine. On the guns. 330 it should be fine now the 155 millimeters guns uh, they currently have 180 millimeters of armor on them we don't need that much they only need I would say 120 uh, they can only have 100 millimeter barbettes anyway and the 80 mil guns. I've got 50 millimeters. Of them. 50, yeah, 50, 50 is more than enough, I think. Oh, and that has actually brought the weight down. Oh, okay. We are very close to being underweight. 48 tons to shave off. Tell you what, can we do it on the 155 mils? No. Although it does help. Do it on these. Yeah, there we go. Very, uh, well, I mean, it's, it, 10, 10 millimeters is not nothing in terms of armor plate. Um, I mean, it's not great, but it's, it's not nothing. And we are underweight with a totally standard battleship um, I could play around with the range in exchange for bulkheads but the range is already not amazing I'm pretty happy with this oh it's engines are starting up I'm pretty happy with this design yeah what's the cost 34.5 Three million, really. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to head back to the map and see what kind, how many we can build. <laughs> yeah, how that, how does that price actually match up to our budget? Okay, we have uh, 190 million or so in our naval funds and these things cost <laughs> 34 uh were 275 410 we could build at most five um but i think we're going to go for a three fleet strategy so i'm going to build three of these Three of these Indomptables. Indomptable, Souffrant, and Bellicus. One of them is going to be based in Brest. This is new, by the way. It shows you how how much capacity is available in each um, port that you're building to, which is really cool. I just wish that... Hey, devs, if you're listening, could you replace this? Max shipyard size with uh, this. The shipbuilding cap. That would be super awesome. Thank you very much. Anyway, um, so yeah, one in Brest, one in La Havre, and one in Marseille, I think, is the way to go with this. Marseille and La Havre. Okay. So that'll give us kind of the backbone of our fleet. Next, we need some armoured 
cruisers. And I'm thinking these as kind of second line ships. So putting one over here in probably... Uh, here in the Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is West... No, that's West Africa. I need one in the Central Atlantic for sure. So Dakar, I think, is the biggest... Yeah. So one in Dakar. One... Well, potentially here, actually. Ivory Coast, which would mean that we're looking for about a, at most 10,000 tons because we could put one over here in Fort de France and we can put one over here in Camera Bay or Fort Bayard. Fort Bayard. So we'll need one, two, three, four of these minimum. So we don't want them to be super expensive. So, well, we only get one hull. The Armoured Cruiser 1, which goes up to potentially 6,000 tons. But uh, I think a 5,000 ton... Oh, it's renamed it. The Bruix. Or Brewy. I think 5,000 tons works better. It also matches the style, which I quite like. Uh, not intentional. Um, this tower is... What? <laughs> Always check them. The cheaper tower is better. <laughs> oh, France. Uh, yeah. Might as well go with the top rear tower. Uh, Speed-wise, I think 80 knots, so they can do the same as the battleships. Again, I'm very much thinking of these as second-class battleships of a sort. Um, one really cool thing about the French ships, though, is you really can get them to nice high engine efficiencies, because... The hulls are so nice. Their, their pre-dreadnought hulls are just fantastic. Right, that is... Okay, because of the structural boats. Let's uh, organise this like so. I don't can't remember if these are structural boats or not. Uh, stick me a gun there. Do they disappear? No. So these are, unfortunately, structural boats. Which is a little bit annoying. Right, weaponry though. Um, now, the Indomitables had 260mm guns. Now, we could, in theory, use those again. Um, I don't think we have any Mark IIs, do we? But I think... Hmm. I think a 205. Might be a good bit. Either, hmm, actually, no, because we'll get marked. Well, hmm. 26 to 30. Hmm. Maybe a 230. Although the rate of fire is really good on these. I'm going to go for a 205. Uh, or we could go for a 210, I suppose. I think we can up, up rate these to a 210. Yeah, let's go for a 210mm gun. Yes, not allowed to fit barbettes, am I? No. See, I'd love to put another one here, but the, uh, the boat's actually getting away, which is kind of annoying. So I guess we have a little um, after deck. Actually, if I go for 4,000 tons, can I just eliminate the boats? <laughs> I can! <laughs> Hacks. 
<laughs> there you go. We can have six 210 millimeter guns. Very nice. Okay, secondaries. We used 155 millimeter before. Uh, but I think possibly smaller, something like a hundred. And... Actually, you know what did we use before? We used eighty mils, didn't we? Let's use those again. So we have eighty millimeter guns. And torpedoes. And we'll just leave the default lengths. Because we can't really adjust lengths very much at the moment. But that is a... That's a nice looking vessel. Right, let's see if we can actually get it to work, though. Especially because it was very minimally armoured and we're 10% overweight. Might have to drop the third gun, which is kind of annoying. Um, Armour, 220 would be... Oh. You're only going to let me have 150 millimetres of armour maximum? Might need to change down to a smaller gun then. I mean that that's more like a one eight uh, one eighty. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get a one eighty millimeter. Okay, because now the one hundred and fifty millimeters of belt feels about right. Um, blocking other stuff, I think about 50 millimeters will be enough. That should block the AP from the 80 mils and it should block HE from the 180s, which is just good practice. Uh, deck armor, yeah, is going to be very minimal, isn't it? Yeah, super minimal. I mean, we could get away with as little as five millimeters on the deck. Uh, and then the tower, 170, something like that. Oh, wow. Oh, it can only go up to 120. Okay. The guns, though, do not need that much armor. Let's go 180. Uh, 10 millimeters on the top. One fifty, and then the eighty millimeter guns. Yeah, fifty. Wait, don't need fifty on the top. You only need five. There. Does actually come in under weight. Lovely, and at about twelve million, they are significantly cheaper than the Indomptables. But do offer a little bit of armoured armored presence, I think. Hmm, yes. I like them. I like them. They, uh, they're giving me a little bit of, a uh, little bit of something. Ooh. Ooh, hello. Would this significantly add to the weight? Adding a couple of uh, let's say 40 millimeter no 40 millimeter guns with very minimal armor on them oh four tons um more more minimal Jesus 
Wow, those can just get taken out by anything, can't they? <laughs> okay. We'd have to drop something else. Properly to get them in four tons, though. Uh, I just like having the, the gun stick out the side, but no, there's only there's only three of them each side. It's probably better off just to not have them. Um. There we go. The Bruix class, or Bruy class. Uh, yeah, they uh, have a certain something about them. I, 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 I do quite like the tumble home. <laughs> okay, I'm going to save this and see if I can afford to build five of them. Uh, see you on the uh, finance screen. Okay, I crunched the numbers. We can afford five of these. Um, and now I can try and remember where I'm going to put them. So, Brewy can go in, uh, let's say, Fort Bayer. Uh, Empre <laughs> impenetrable. Emprenable. Um, Fort de France. La Touche Trevel. was going to be in... Dakar, I think. Yep. Dakar. Congreve. We need... Over in... Hmm. It's proper in Libreville. And then... One, two, three, four, five. I was like, one, two, three, four. Where was the fifth one to go? Oh, West Indian Ocean. But I'm not sure. Yes. I'm not sure she would actually be any good there. Uh, but the other place that could be useful to have one is Tunis. Okay, perfect. Right, now we need some protected cruisers. Particularly, I must have a protected cruiser over here in the West Indian Ocean. Probably two, which means they're going to have to be 3,000 tons or less, potentially. So they're going to be relatively small ships. Um, and I need one there, and then the rest can just... The game can just spread them around really um okay cruisers we have three we have the three master experimental three master and the lc1 the standard three mast has ridiculously good resistance but it's very slow um, I think the LC, I think the like Cruiser One is going to be our best bet. Um, they're two million base. These are cheaper at one point seven, but yeah, let's go for the LC One. Because uh, these could could potentially go 20 knots, but we only need them to go 18 um, towers. Uh, a tower. Uh, they're much of a muchness, but let's go for the decent one. Funnels. Yeah, I could get away with two. Yep, 
gives it a weird gapped toothed appearance. Could I make the ship smaller? There's no point paying for bulk if we don't need it. Yeah, make it shorter. Still going to look a little bit gap toothed, but it's not quite as bad. I mean, just cut out unnecessary bits of ship, which is nice. Um, yes. Okay, gun wise. Uh, we could use the hundred and eighty millimeters, but let's be honest here, that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna fly. <laughs> Uh, we can't really reuse 80 millimeters. Um, so we're going to have to come up with a new new caliber, I think, for these guys. About a 110. Yeah, I think the 110s. Hundred and ten millimeter guns, plenty of them. Some torpedoes. Really? Oh. Let's bring some let's bring some little forty millimeter guns because that's funny. Um Yeah. Why not? Cool. Very simple. Um, there's almost nothing in the way of upgrades. Yeah, that's about it. Um, okay, armor. 60 millimeters is going to be what I want but uh, yeah good luck with that um, 60 and 20 probably more doable deck armor Pfft, do we even need any it's already on kind of minimum uh Yeah, minimum. Just keep everything ultra minimal and we're 7% overweight. <laughs> Damn. Um, what is so heavy about this? Hull. <laughs> Fuel. <laughs> Engines. Uh, and the funnels are up there. Okay, everybody always tells me off about the funnels. So let's get rid of those really heavy ones. Although I still think they're probably going to be the best funnel cap per ton. 11 divided by 95. So these are 0 0.116. Oops. 10 divided by 1. Uh, these are zero point one two. Okay, so these are actually slightly better. Those are very clearly worse. Um, these are worse. These are also worse. And these are also worse. So these are actually the best ones. I'm still going to need two of them. But uh, we do save a little bit of weight from doing that. I could, of course, upsize the ship. Just don't want to make her longer. There we go. If we just increase the displacement a little bit, then we're all hunky-dory. Um, it does increase their cost a little bit. These are all more than half 
what a brewery costs, so I'd rather have a brewery over there, one of these things, but these things are small, and that is an advantage all to itself, because we can put them out in small ports out and about. Right, I'm pretty happy with that. Most of the money went on the guns, by the way, in case you're wondering. Lots of guns means lots of expensive uh, things. I mean, we could reduce it down. Could do a little bit of cost saving. Tell you what, let's remove these guns and instead put a central fore and aft gun. Yeah, look, look at that. That really takes the price down a lot. Because, you know, the two guns at the front, unless I'm firing forwards or aft, are not, strictly speaking, necessary. And we still have plenty of firepower, but I think I'm actually going to remove these ones as well. Just to make the ship a little bit more balanced. Um, but it also means we can get some nice-to-haves, like maximum bulkheads to give these things a bit of survivability because they don't really have armor based survivability and we can enhance their range because these things are going to be operating out off out of remote island bases covering a lot of uh, a lot of sea so a little bit of extra range would be very nice indeed um, and I'm going to call these the colony class because that is exactly what they are for. <laughs> they are for going out and, and looking after our colonies. Save that. Let's see how many we can buy. Actually, no. I only have torpedo boats, right? Yeah. Oh, what's this? Ah. <gasps> I didn't see this one. That's so much cooler. Okay, we can compare them. This can be our colonial one. This can be our... No, this is tiny. Look at it. It's so small. Oh, maybe I don't use the colony class. Maybe I use these instead, because this is amazing. And then our fleet will look unified. Mmm, yes. Excellent. Oh, please let these be doable. <laughs> Look at the tiny towers. The, yes, the minimal tower. Oh, why did I not see you? Hmm, yes. More funnels. Six. <laughs> Still not 100%, but it's close enough. Um, now, the, the colonies, I was going with 110s, wasn't I? I think we could reuse the 155 from the Indomptable instead. We can have three of them. There's a hell of a lot more firepower. I like heavy firepower. Uh... Oh yeah, we can put 40 millimeter guns on this thing. Loads of them. Glorious. <laughs> oh yeah, oh colony class, you're getting deleted after this, probably. <laughs> Oh my god, look how many torpedoes it can carry. This thing is a uh, hundred million times better. Let's just let's take another look. I mean, I'm probably not going to be able to get this thing underweight. But uh, at the moment, I'm kind of loving it. Yeah, it came with no armor at all. Um, so, we want... 
155 and oops negative and 40 millimeter guns everywhere right how much armor can you put on this thing six yeah 60 mil which is not enough to protect against its own guns I'm gonna have to downgrade the guns I'm so sorry we just do not have the displacement to do it. In fact, even with no main guns or secondary tower, it is complaining. Uh, so I think actually, what about a uh, 130 millimeter gun? Just. Yeah, just three of them. Uh, 130mm. Because these things... Yeah, the 60mm is now something I can can live with. Uh, yeah, all that super minimal. Uh, Can maybe have a little bit more than the, the guns themselves. Oh Jesus! Um, yeah, ambitious. Better yet, ambitious. How do we get you underweight? Dropping your range. Cramped. Ooh, four tons. Okay. How do I drop four tons off you? Maybe a bit off the turret. It's, yeah, turrets do not need that up much armor. Let's go. 80. Okay, can I get standard crew quarters back? No. You get any range back? Also no. Bulkets? No. So we also have the... Tr these now fulfill very different roles. So we have a very cheap... Well, I say very cheap. We have a cheap fire... Well, actually, they're almost the same price. But this is way smaller. So this I see more as a picket ship for keeping at home. And this is for where we actually need one. So I'm going to save this design. And before I got distracted, I'm just going to say, I'm not building any torpedo boats. Torpedo boats are stupid. So let's, uh, let's get those cruisers built. Okay, we need to identify where we want colony class ships. Because they are... Mm, slightly larger at 2,300 tons. I think we want one in Saint Denis or Saint, Saint Denis, and a, but I can't fit one in Moroni, so we're going to put one in Reunion. Uh, ship design, colony, build uh, one for now in Reunion. Go. Okay. Uh, where else, colony class wise, are we going to need it? Because I don't think it'll fit in. No, but the other ones will. <laughs> uh, we probably could use one in KN. Um, and I'm trying to think where else be an obvious put pick Digibooty if it'll fit yes 
Okay. So that's the colonies. We can build more as, as we need them. But that, that should give me some longer-ranged convoy raiding power. And then how much money do I have left? 11.9 million. That is not very much because these things cost nearly five. So I can build two truders. Um, well, I think it makes sense to have one in Bonifacio. In fact, let's put one in Bonifacio, one in San Florent. <laughs> Why not? San Florent. Bonifacio. And then uh, once the game starts, I will probably concentrate on on building uh, building more Truder class ships um, over the colonies because these, these will fit basically anywhere and these are basically replacing our destroyers or light cruisers or what have you. So I'm not going to touch the finance slider. Uh, I'm going to start the campaign and uh, let's see what our eco looks like turn one. Sometimes you do have to go into February before you can really tell. Right. Uh, max shipyard size is actually decent, but it's usually worth building that out early on. And, of course, maxing our transport capacity slider. Tech budget is at 50%, which I think early on is going to be fine. I would like to get my crew training up to 50% as well. Nice. That gives me a very healthy monthly balance. Uh, all of these are on in being, which I'm going to leave them on in being for now. Um because I do want them to get trained up in case we have an early war. Uh, wow, they all... Well, this one doesn't. But a lot of them have uh, a lot of flaws. Um, <laughs> always fun. Research-wise, I think I'll just... I'll just leave it to do its thing for a bit. Um, given that we have spare money, I'm immediately going to order... Well, how much are these per month? 623,000 a month. Um, so I could order as many as 10, I think. <laughs> nope, game says no. I could build three. And again, we'll, we'll let them distribute those. Even though I could actually afford to build more. It's because it's like you don't have enough naval funds. Which is weird, because I would normally just pay them out of... Anyway, next turn I should be able to up that to... Up that order. Right. Uh, one of our military ships has collided with a destroyer. Belong really? I don't think it has. Spanish don't have destroyers. Uh, that is definitely due to Spanish incompetence. <laughs> and there we go. There are all the canals opening. Okay, now will you let me order another seven? Yes, you will. Huzzah. So, yeah, like I said, I'm just going to let the game distribute these. And we're going to build them up as a bit of a... We need a ship out there type of uh, type of vessel. Uh, let us have a look at the state of the world though because it has should it should have stabilized out. So we are sitting on 18 and a half billion GDP. that's not too shabby. We have a massive 13 ships <laughs> but we do have three battleships. okay let's look at Spain who apparently have a destroyer I think not. Um, actually, what's our total tonnage? 61,500 tons. So we have a bigger fleet than Spain. They don't have any battleships. Um, 
we have a similar size fleet to the Japanese. These guys have much smaller economies than us, by the way. They only have two battleships. Italy has no battleships at all. It does have a much bigger fleet than us. But, uh, yeah, they don't have any battleships, which is nice to see. We are par on parity with the United States. We actually have a bigger economy than the United States at the moment, thanks to our empire. Yeah, United States and Spain might be going to war. All right. Uh, China. Rocking a pretty big fleet. Sizable economy. Not too bad. Austria has five battleships. Damn. They've just gone battleships, light cruisers. <laughs> Fair enough. Russians have four battleships. Our economy is actually really good at the start of the game. Uh, the Germans have six, which is a little bit troubling. And the British have seven. Hopefully we can get an Entente Cordiale going because, you know, in, in theory, in a big war, the British should be able to handle the Germans and we can handle the Austrians and maybe the Italians, depending on whether Italy wants to be our friend or not. Um, actually, I'm just going to order some more of these. How many will you let me build? Another 10. Be 6 million a month, which I... No, I can't afford that. I can afford 4 million a month, though. Let's go for another 6. That'll give me a ton of light cruiser coverage. And it should ensure that we don't lose too much in the way of transports. Um... Yeah. All right, I'm going to let... Hmm, do I let the game just throw them out wherever it wants? Probably. It tends to be the way I do it. Um, I've, I've made sure that we have... I don't think there are any... Sea regions where we don't have any power projection. That's what you really want to avoid. You don't want to have a colony in a, in a region and have zero... Power projection, although it says... Oh, Southern Indian Ocean. Well, I don't think anyone's going to bother down there. But uh, let's make sure and put one of them down in the Kerguelen Islands. Um... Southeast Asia. Yes, we have power projection. Uh, South Pacific, we don't. So again, if we earmark one for French Polynesia and one for the Marquesas Islands. Uh, French Polynesia. Cases, islands, and then we will definitely be covered. Okay, well, um, I think I'm going to say thank you very much for watching, and uh, I think I'll see you again very soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Treadnoughts. Bye for now.